Hello. To finish this part where we are discussing um, about the different types of tests, from unit tests to user tests, I would like you to read this document uh, and think about, look at this food for thought, think about um, what is what are the concepts and what are the problems that they address. And the first note that I want to tell you is that uh, we, in software engineering sometimes, different people use different names and uh, slightly different concepts that you may have uh, noticed when you're talking coverage, that um, we use different concepts that with small differences, so we sh you should be aware of it. And um, we should be able to use the, the concept we already have to interpret the other ones. For, for instance, in this case, they talk about the problem of deciding which type of tests should we do more. So what are the, the type of tests we should do? And what is interesting here is that they define a pyramid. And in this pyramid, they distinguish between unit tests, service tests, and UI tests. Actually, that was not the type of tests we talk about. And because we talk about unit tests, user tests, uh, component tests, okay, release tests, and it, it's it's nice to exercise to see how they match in these concepts. Why? Because actually, in the article, they they argue. So this is a proposal from other t uh, other people, not the people from the ar the, the, the article for Mike uh, Cohn, and. They propose probably that we you should use even different concept of tests. That probably UI tests are not uh, that, that are not the ones that you should execute or you should implement less. And so it's interesting to play with it. So I wanted to look, but I think that what the first way to look at it that is really interesting is this idea that these errors here. So it's always software engineering is about trade-offs. And the trade-off here is, so it depends. So it's about more integration, more isolation, slower, faster. Look, to have faster tests, it's relevant because when you want to run your tests, for instance, when you are doing unit testing, you are implementing, and you, may, you want to run some tests every five minutes. So it's good that your unit tests are quick. It's, use, it's nice to not to use, for instance, a real database because then it will be much slower. But if you move to other types of tests and you really want to test the complete system, you need to use a real database. So probably slower tests should be less number of slower tests. You, okay? So there are these trade-offs that I want to look at it. And actually what they talk here, so the first thing they argue is that the difference is not between UI tests, unit tests, and what is interesting is that they say, I can do a lot of UI testing, user interface testing, using unit tests. The difference is between end-to-end -end tests and unit tests. And this is interesting because there, sometimes there is this confusion between UI tests and end-to-end -end tests. I can have UI tests without end-to-end -end tests. But at the same time, these forces, these trade-offs are really relevant about, um, how, about which type of tests should you program and which should be, be more frequent, okay? So it means that the ones that have more isolation and that are faster should program more tests like this and less tests that are that require more integration and are slower by more integration look is that if my test uh, needs to interact with the database needs to interact with a mail service needs to interact with a remote service well this is it's more integration is slower I need to program these tests but these tests are much more difficult to maintain so I think that that's the the type of food source for thought that I want you to to look at so what are the, actually the type of tests they the type of tests they they refer okay and then we'll uh, i will ask you to try to map with our concepts actually the, our concepts are the ones i'm going to ask in the in the tests and the exams of course we need to to have a language that to share but we need to be able to look with other concepts okay 
because that's what you're going to see in your uh, uh, professional life is that um, there's a lot of language around so that's no uh, so there are as I told you there are different names to say the same thing so you you, you need to, to be you need to be able to deal with it and and and, and think by just looking at the different uh, ways of different formulations of similar things and understand the relations. But um, the type of tests they talk about, they talk about, um, and I want you to look at it, to unit tests, close to what I've um, uh, told you, integration tests, okay, that's a bit uh, more different because you look, you talk about uh, in database integration, integration with separated services, is not really, really, we cannot say that they are our component tests, but component tests may map with it, okay? Then they have very interesting ones that I want you to look at, which are contract tests. So what are contract tests? It's just tests where you define these tests as a contract so that you can split the work of people, okay? So that's this idea about um, having a specification, you specify an interface, two teams work separately, and then they integrate. But the problem, as I told you, a lot of bugs is in the integration, but there are tools, very interesting tools, that when you define this interface, you write a contract and it generates automatically tests that are going to test each one of the parts independently. So suppose that you have component A and component B, Team A and Team B, and Team A is going to use, or Component A is going to use Component B, okay? And they define an interface, and by defining the interface and defining a contract, the system is automatically going to generate, or they are going to generate tests that exercise B as invoked by A. But at the same time, they generate mocks that when you implement A, can use like B is there. So it's a very interesting uh, um, thing. We cannot teach you everything, but um, it's something that is particularly relevant when you have uh, large teams working together and you can you try to integrate this idea of testing in that context. And another thing is UI testing and this, um, this mystification that actually UI testing is not necessarily end-to-end uh, -end testing, as I already told you, and then end-to-end -end tests that are closer to the, 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 the value of the, the business that you basically describe end-user to end test, so you, you, you use the system and acceptance, acceptance test as well. So read it, enjoy it, and we'll discuss, discuss it during class. Okay, good read.